Hi, everyone. It is now a time for an episode of The Janelle Show. And I am so excited because I have Renee with me and she is a wife, a mom of two, and a life transformation coach. She helps moms to design their dream life and business and ditch the guilt cycle and show up as their best self. Her mission is to help women thrive and not just survive. Hi, Renee. How are you? Oh, hello. I'm so honored to be on your podcast today. So thank you so much. No, thank you for being here. I love your bio because I resonated so deeply with it. I actually, the episode that I did a couple of weeks ago was um, for Mother's Day and it was talking about mom motivation. Like I had completely dropped my self-care and um, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was just surviving. I wasn't thriving. So I love that. That's what you speak about. So tell me, how did you start this business? Oh my gosh, it's always a really hard thing to like answer and condense down into a small response because it feels like a really long journey to get to this place. So I guess to give a little bit of background, um, many years ago when I was in my early 20s, I was actually diagnosed with cervical cancer. And that was quite a journey in itself, as you can probably imagine. Um, From there, we were sort of told that having children was probably not going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I became pregnant at the age of about 25, 26 and had a terrible pregnancy. You know, it involved weekly trips to doctors to check on things. You know, it was very touch and go a lot of the time. I had to have a surgery when I was pregnant. I was on bed rest for most of my pregnancy. It was a very traumatic experience. Um, And then I became obviously a mother. I I did birth a beautiful baby girl. Um, But from there, I ended up with postpartum anxiety. And I think, Mm -hmm. to be honest, it was a real buildup from the previous traumas that I'd experienced that I probably, to be honest, hadn't actually dealt with. From there, we, we, you know, I was fumbling my way through motherhood as I really think we all do when we become a mum for the very first time. And we mm-hmm. do go into that survival mode. It is about just getting through each and every day. And especially when you're dealing with something like, you know, postpartum anxiety, or you've got these other factors and things going on in your world that are creating additional stress to what is already a a sometimes stressful time for us. Mm -hmm. And from there, I I did have another pregnancy, but unfortunately we did lose that baby. And then I fell pregnant again and I did birth another beautiful baby, but this time it was a boy. Um, Again, very difficult pregnancy and whatnot. And at that point, my daughter was three and a half when he was born. And I'd started noticing little signs of anxiety in her and Mm. having that mirror in front of me and reflecting back some of my behaviors and some of my things in her was the deal breaker for me. I was like, I have got to get, I have got to get myself sorted. I cannot, you know, have my issues on them. So Mm -hmm. from there, I then went down a massive personal development path and had such a transformation in myself and saw the flow and effect that that had with my family, you know, not everyone around me, not just the kids. Mm -hmm. And I then became really passionate on helping moms, you know, as we said, thrive, not just survive. I didn't want moms to, you know, endure what I'd endured and feel all the guilt and all the things that come up. And so from there, I, you know, did a coaching certification and became a coach myself. And I think because I've had that lived experience, it makes it very different for me because when I work with my clients, I can really resonate with them. I get it. I have that compassion and empathy because I'm like, girl, I have been there too. (laughs) And I know what it's like. And Yeah. So I'm really passionate about what I do. And I just love helping mums get to a place where they feel like they they are living their best life and they're also at their best self for themselves, but also for their family as well. No, I love that. So let's say we have somebody in the audience who may resonate with this. What were some of the, what are some of the symptoms that your clients have noticed yourself may be included that um, they may say, mm, I think I've, I'm dealing with that as well. I think mum guilt is 
in particular something I really feel we often deal with. But it's when that mum guilt is this lingering feeling. It's that feeling like it's not going away and you're not getting a break from it. You're constantly in this, you know, feeling of not being good enough, not doing enough, not, you know, this not enoughness. And I think when it plays out in your life and you're feeling like it's preventing you from being in the present moment and enjoying the present moment, that's when you know that, hey, look, this might be something I need to look into this might be something where I need a little bit more help and support around Um, and that's where I think that first step of having that awareness of hmm maybe I'm I'm struggling a little bit more than I realize because I think with mums we are really good at covering up we are really good at displaying to the world this I've got it all together I'm doing fine you know people ask how are you I'm, I'm good. It's just this natural response. So we can often hide how we're truly feeling on the inside. And so I think the first step is always being able to recognize how are you doing? How are you really feeling? What are the thoughts that you have going on? Because, you know, a lot of the clients I work with, they do keep that to themselves. And quite often partners, best friends, all these other people in their world have no idea how they're really feeling and how they're really coping. Yeah. I'm a big, um, supporter of having a village and Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely being able to tap into those people and they recognizing you that you're having an issue and be able to get help you know even if it's just dropping the kids off and having some time to yourself right oh absolutely and it I think another area where we can struggle and I notice this in my clients and even myself too is Mm -hmm. asking for help Mm -hmm. asking for help you know, it does take a village. And I think in the society that we're now in, we've really gotten to this place of like, no, I can do it all, you know, and, you know, we're, we're almost expected on a society level to be a mom, have a clean home, catch up with our friends, run a successful business or have this amazing career and do all these things. And the reality is people that have all these things, are not doing it alone. You know, they have help in some capacity. And so when you've got a a friend or your partner or mother, mother mother-in-law, whoever it might be saying, can I do anything to help? Instead of being like, no, I've got it all together. Thanks anyway. Say yes, say yes to the help. You know, even if it is just, you know, watching your, your little one so you can take five minutes for yourself or go for a walk or, you know, fold the washing, whatever it is for you, accepting help because it does take a village and we need to lean on the people around us and know that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to get that help as well. And it's so beneficial because you get the flow on effect from being able to potentially refill your own cup means you have that energy and that capacity to show up better as a mum for your kids as well. And so you're actually doing your kids a favor at the same time. So Accept the help. Ask for help. <laughs> so I think we just can't coin a new hashtag. Hashtag normalize asking for help. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I was talking to this lady the other day and she said, I have a housekeeper that comes every week. And I said, oh, <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> she was like, well, with four kids and two dogs, I needed somebody to come every week. And yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Yeah. Because <laughs> you yeah. can't do it all. Exactly. And sometimes it's even being able to do a trade-off. So for instance, Mm -hmm. one of um, my clients, she's, you know, starting up a business and it's really, you know, that challenging time of like, you're really in the thick of the business side, but she's also got a family. Mm -hmm. And so she's been finding it hard to have that, you know, child free time to to mm-hmm. concentrate on her business. Understandably, we've all been there. Yeah, and yeah. so what she's done is she's actually reached out to some friends of hers who also have kids and they're actually going to take turns of looking after each other's kids one day a week, mm-hmm. just for a couple of hours to give each other that time and space they need for their own things. And so, you know, it could even be that you reach out to a friend and say, hey, I'd love to have your kids over for a play date that gives them that time and space they need and then they'll repay that favor as well and the the double whammy of that one is your kids also get other kids to have a play date with at the same time Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. it's looking at ways in which you can get the time you need back for yourself and how you can make that happen as well and so that's another an option that you can use if you are someone who who's like you know might be 
living with no family nearby or you don't have that that community with you Mm -hmm. that's something you can reach out and um organize as well yeah I know when my guy was little we used to do that all the time he has a a brother he calls him his brother because they've been each with each other since the bit his brother was born so and they don't know any difference that they're not related (laughs) they just just think they're yeah (laughs) he's like yeah I've got a brother he doesn't have a brother (laughs) that's so (laughs) curious yeah it's great definitely so tell me more about your business so do you you offer coaching is it group coaching is it one-on-one coaching tell me more about that how do people work with you yeah so it's one-on-one coaching like one-on-one coaching, one-on-one connection is like my jam. It's the thing that I absolutely love and adore. And I think with the work that I do, one-on-one in in particular is really valuable because it allows the client to feel that they can really be vulnerable and open up and share in such a safe space. Whereas group coaching, although I love it as a participant, I think it's that little bit trickier in this situation where a lot of the time it's really hard to open up and share your insecurities and and the thoughts that you're having and the feelings. So one-on-one coaching is my thing. And so I have a 12-week program where I work with my clients and it's called Mum Life Transformed because obviously that is what we do in that program. And it's really about getting mums to the point where they are living their best life. They are living a life that they have created for themselves that is exactly what they they want and I think it's really important that it's really personalized and customized to them because you know my dream life might look different to your dream life and so forth and so it's getting that clarity around what does your dream life look like what does your dream life look like with a business or with your career or whatever it is you have going on and together we really you know, establish what are the action steps we need to take to get that dream life? Who do you need to embody and become to get that dream life? And really looking at all the the habits and the routines and structures you have in life. And it's such a like holistic um, plan as well. Like we look into so many things. It's not just about time management and, and the routines and structure. It's also about managing your energy, how you can give back to yourself, your self-care and, you know, getting yourself to this place where you can really work through a lot of your limiting beliefs as well and look at the thoughts that you're having and, and being able to shift that perspective and that mindset so you can get to a place where you, again, you're thriving, not just surviving and getting out of that mode so you can be at your best self. And you see such a flow on effect for not only the person as the client, but also their family as well, their relationships that they have, how they're showing up in their business or their career and all the things. And so that program in particular is something that I just cherish. And I feel really honored to work with those clients because you get to see that transformation and you know what that's like as well with what you do. Watching somebody at the beginning of their journey, working with you to the end is you're just so in awe of it and Mm -hmm. so honored to be a part of that journey with them as well. Yeah, no, I had a client I'm thinking, but you're making me think of her right now because she just, she started at like literally nothing, an idea concept, right? And where she's gotten in the past couple of weeks, we've only been working together a couple of weeks. is just mind blowing. It just, being an entrepreneur just makes me so happy to be able to help people in that way. So I can tell that you feel the same way. Yeah. And I think when there's such passion behind it, it makes such a difference for the client too. And in particular, when you've walked, you know, in similar shoes to them, you've, you've Mm -hmm. had similar experiences, but the difference being we've been able to, I guess, overcome those challenges and those obstacles and hurdles. And we've, you know, we've been able to get to the place we're in and now we can help others do the same, which there's just something so special about that. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Yeah, definitely. So I want to talk about, because we do talk about a little bit of marketing. So I love to talk about how do you get your clients? How do you market your your coaching program? Yeah, so that has changed over time, obviously. Um, and at the moment, I think my biggest thing is podcasting as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I too have my own podcast, Embracing Life. And so I often find when I when I talk to my clients and I'm like, how did, how did you come across me? Like, where did this all begin? 
it's often that they've listened to me on a, my podcast or, you know, for listeners who don't have a podcast, it might be that you've been a guest on somebody's podcast. From there, they'll typically then go and find you on social media. So I notice that they find me on social media. They, you know, start, you know, consuming the content that I'm putting out. You're sort of developing that no like trust factor with them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they'll often then, you know, take advantage of like a lead magnet that I might have. So in the past, I've done free masterclasses that I've then recorded and uploaded onto my website as like a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they then naturally progress, you know, into my offers. And so that's typically my, my, my podcast really is the place that I nurture probably quite a lot because I know that a lot of my leads kind of come from there. Um, but it's also a lot of networking for me as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really connecting with other people, whether that's in masterminds, whether it's, you know, the connections you make on Instagram, places like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of the thing. And I think for marketing for me anyway it's been about knowing what I actually like and enjoy yes. and putting my concentration there um I I have like a Facebook group mm -hmm. um that I look after people in and nurture in that community so that's another place in which I I tend to put my energy and focus um but Pinterest is something that I've been umming and ahhing about um, I have done the odd thing on Pinterest, but I, I'm just, yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm going to go down that path. But yeah, I think it's about almost looking at the different things that you can use to market yourself um, mm -hmm. and finding what you enjoy. But of course, I've also got email marketing as well. So people can subscribe to like a newsletter that I'll do a weekly email newsletter to and of course, you offer all the good stuff in those as well, don't you? It's like those early bird offers. It's all the special things that they get as well because they're a part of your community. So I guess I'm doing a few different things in regards to marketing and just finding what works best and what strategy is going to best work for me because I think that's the other thing too is finding what works best for you because, you know, the marketing strategy you might be using might work amazing for you but then I might go to do it and it's not the same so I don't think there's like this one size fits all sort of approach I think it's about finding what works for you and then tweaking it as you go along I couldn't have said it any better definitely um, <laughs> I like to call it holistic marketing what you're doing is touching on all parts like you're saying holistic for your lifestyle holistic marketing as well so I love to hear that I'm excited about it just got excited <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hard because you can easily like follow other people and mm -hmm. you look to them and you're like, well, they're doing X, Y, Z. I have to be doing X, Y, Z. And the reality is you don't, you know, it's, it's about what trying things, finding what fits, what works and going from there. No, definitely. Um, I like to ask another question about people who how do I put this? They want to start a business or they want to start coaching people. Because a lot of people I notice they want to be coaches, but they're scared to like just jump in to get to coaching, right? So um, I would like some action items from you. How you transitioned into coaching? How how can you give some action items to the listeners on how that got started for you? I think the biggest thing is I had this feeling like I want to be doing this. You know, it's almost like you just get this little voice inside you that's like, I want to coach. I want to help people. I, I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. And I think listening to that, you mm -hmm. know, rather than being like, I can't do that. I'm not skilled enough to do that. You know, I'm not all the things that might come up. Listen to that that gut instinct you have and follow it and trust it and know that you're you're thinking that for a reason. and what's the harm in trying? And I think being able to just take the steps to go down that path and just see what happens and being open to everything, you know, I think fear is something that we definitely let hold, let us, you know, hold us back. And it can be really hard when you, you might have this desire to become a coach, but you've got this you know, voice in your head telling you you're not good enough or you can't do it and all the reasons why this is not going to work. And I think it's a matter of just 
taking those step by steps towards it. I think also getting the experience as well. You know, if you're new to coaching and you haven't, you know, been a coach or gone into this space, I think it's really worthwhile just, you know, getting a client it doesn't have to be paid. It can be, you mm-hmm. know, just a client that you work with and get that experience. You know, it's almost like a try before you buy situation, you know, work with somebody, test out to see, you know, how you feel about it. Is this something you want to do and go from there? You'll soon know whether or not it's for you. Um, but I think also just trusting in yourself and your abilities as well. Like, you know, of course you can go and get a coaching certification and that will definitely give you so many skills and knowledge and tools that you can use in coaching. But I think also knowing that you've probably got lived experiences yourself, you know, you've probably been able to look at at your own journey and go, you know what, I was here, I got myself here, what were the steps that I took to do that? And looking at your own journey as well, because quite often I've, I find that a lot of coaches end up coaching in the space that they've already been in themselves. And so you are your first client. And so reflecting back on your own journey and the steps you took, and then looking at that and going, okay, well, how can I implement that into helping others? And I think coming from that place of just wanting to help others as well, you know, there's so many people in the social media world that are like, mm-hmm. become a coach, 10K months, da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of noise around the money, but I think especially when it comes to coaching, it's more coming from that place of that wanting to help others and make a difference and make an impact on somebody. And so looking at ways that you can do that is probably a a great kind of place to start. I work mostly with coaches. My target audience is typically coaches, right? And I found that people who want to be coaches are probably already coaching they just don't realize it. Right. So when we get on the phone with a friend and we're telling girl, you know, you need to do this, that they're coaching, you're coaching already and you're just not getting paid for it. And you don't realize how amazing you already are at coaching already, like, and taking those baby steps, right? Like you said, get a client and have it in your mind that this is going to be my next client. Even if it's free, that's okay. But it'll get you closer. Like, oh, I am a coach. Oh, I do know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. and I think when you work with that that first client, whether it's a beta tester client or not, Mm -hmm. it'll help you solidify your confidence a little bit more. Because I think the lack of confidence is is really hard at the start. And I know that was something for me I found tricky in the beginning. I was like oh, I don't feel like I'm I'm good enough at what I'm doing, you know. But when you work with clients and you get to see their transformations unfold, it starts giving you that like validation that, hey, actually I can do this. I am good at this. I'm able to do this and it helps you. But I love how you touched on, you know, you're probably already coaching because quite often I find with, with coaches and even myself is you tend to be the person in your friend circle that, your friends come to for advice or your friends come to, to get some wisdom or, you know, inspiration from. And so that typically does end up being the person that ends up being a coach as well. So yeah, it's so true. We end up being a coach with, before we even realize we're a coach. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. Um, Renee, this has been so insightful. I would like to ask one more question of you. I always ask all my guests. Um, I'd love a book recommendation from you. I'm a avid book reader I love I like read a book a week seriously it's really bad wow yeah you should see my Amazon (laughs) Kindle Ah. account it's really bad (laughs) so I would love to get a book recommendation from you for the audience what is what are you loving right now or what would you suggest to them well firstly a book a week is hashtag goals because (laughs) I I'm at the moment, like uh, my goal's always been a book a month. And (laughs) so I'm going to give a little tip here because I love reading books, but finding the time can be really tricky. So what I did was I started with this goal of like, a book is typically around, and I mean, not all books, but around 300 pages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in order for me to read a book a month, I aim for 10 pages of reading a day. 
Mm-hmm. So I just thought I, I would throw that out there, but gosh, I would love to get to one book a week. Um, probably a more recent book that I've read that I found hugely impactful was um, The New Hustle by Emma Isaacs. So mm-hmm. Emma Isaacs is the, well, I don't know if she's the creator, but she is the, the person behind Business Chicks, um, which is, she's just an amazing person, very inspiring. But The New Hustle is a book that I love because she talks about, you know, having a business and owning a business and running a business and that you don't have to be in this hustle mentality 24 seven. And that she gives you all these really tangible like tips in the book as well. So like this book, I have highlighted, I have underlined, I have like page marked. This book has been like a resource one. And I know it's one that I'll constantly go back and refer to. So for anyone who either wants to start a business or has a business, this is definitely a book I really would encourage everyone to go and grab and read because there is just so many like aha moments throughout it that I know will be beneficial for you. I love that. Okay. The new hustle. Yeah. Okay. I got it. All right. I'm going to grab that one. I see. I need a physical one, not on my Kindle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. Renee, thank you so much. This has actually been so phenomenal. I appreciate you. Tell me where everyone can find you, your website, social media. How can we reach out to you? We'd love to hire you for your services. Please tell us more. Yeah, so I guess my favorite place to hang out would be Instagram. I love being on that place. So you'll find me at Renee.O'Neill. So R-E-N-A-E dot O-N-E-I-L-L. Um, website is Renee And I also have my podcast as well, which is called Embracing Life with Renee O'Neill. <laughs> so they are the places. But yeah, Instagram is definitely my place to hang out. So I would love for you to come on over and send me a DM and say hi. Wonderful. Thank you. And those links will be down in the show notes below and in the comments and all of that. So thank you guys for listening. This has been the Janelle Show. Renee, thank you so much for being here with me. Oh, thank you so much. I've loved having, being on. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.